Well, hi there. I'm Sandy Alnock, artist and paper crafter here on YouTube with a quick video this time because it's focusing mostly on the stamping of vignette images. If you have some images that you want to kind of fade out to the outside and turn into white and you just want to focus on the central portion of it, I'm going to show you how using these two images from Impression Obsession, Giraffe Love and Elephant Love. And the idea is to put the darkest portion of the stamping in the center and stamp lighter colors to the outside. That depends on what colors you have. You can go with one, two, three, four colors and how big the image is as well. But I'm stamping with Manatee ink, which is a gray ink, and I'm stamping really, really lightly. So I'm going really quickly on it. But each time I add ink to it, I'm tapping with a semi-dry baby wipe. Don't do it with a soaking wet baby wipe semi-dry baby wipe on the outside edges of where that ink stops and I'm going to get darker as I go to the inside. I'm just doing two colors, the manatee and black and the first press on each color is a light press and then I go kind of zoom in by tapping just the corner of the ink pad onto the stamp so that I can press it just in that area and for this one I'm going to cut a mask. I'm using some of the Eclipse tape to stamp it on and then you'll see that in action in just a little bit because I'll do a little airbrush. The elephants, I'm going to do the very same thing. Put my ink all over the whole thing and then tap off those outside edges. And again, don't do it with a super wet one or you'll get globbies of water and that's not good. <laughs> but you'll stamp just kind of darker and darker as you get toward the center of the image. Now the center of your image may not always be in the middle. It might be three quarters of the way if you have a whole background scene type of stamp and you just want to focus on the flowers in the foreground, you could do the very same thing. It really depends on where you want the focal point of the vignette to be, where the center of it's going to be. And then just keep going until you get to the very middle and then you have images like this. The drafts, I told you I was cutting a mask out because I wanted to throw a little tiny bit of airbrush over it. So I'm just putting it in my Copic airbrush gun and then spraying just a very light coating of color. You could do this with Distress inks or something as well. Just do it really, really light. And here I'm just putting a little halo of blue around the elephants. Wasn't sure if I would need that or not. But when it comes to the coloring of an image like this, you'll start with coloring kind of your full strength colors in that same area where you had the black ink, the darkest ink and I'll just keep kind of adding colors as I go because I don't want to get too dark too fast and not know where to stop but I'm gonna just keep centering the darkest areas on the inside so it's not like shading necessarily you're not worried about where the lights coming from you're worried about where you're pulling the eye the focus of the eye into and if you want it in the center of the image like here where the two heads meet then put your darkest colors in there so even the spots, I'm going to use those to communicate some of that vignette by having darker colors here in the middle. And then as I get to the outside edges, I'm going to use lighter and lighter colors so that that coloring fades out just like the stamped ink will fade out and just slowly work its way to the outside of the vignette image. So see how that, that lighter shade starts to work? And in this case, I'm not even worrying about blending them from one to another. I can just jump to the next row of spots and just continue to lighten them up as I get to the outside edges. And once I'm kind of happy with the outside edges, then I can go in and really darken the centers, pick some nice rich colors to really pull the eye in. And on the finished car, this is going to have a really good effect to, to just draw the eye right to that very center little spot where the the best of the hugging is going on with the little giraffes and i left the card really clean and simple otherwise just a simple sentiment and uh, pop that layer on another piece of cardstock for my card base so the elephants i'm going to put a little I, I didn't want them just to be gray because that could be kind of boring so I'm going to undercoat it with some B60. It's kind of a, a light pale bluish purplish color and it will just start to give some shape to the whole thing. And I, I wanted to start with a light color because I wanted to make sure I reserved those tusks. I don't want the tusks to get colored. So coloring it with a light color first while I'm thinking 
keeps me from later on covering it up by accident because I don't want to do that. And then I'll start working in some of my, these are actually going to be my mid-tone colors. I am going to put some really dark colors in here in a little bit, but this puts my mid-tone colors in so I can start working toward that outside little by little, putting some of the detail in their faces and in their trunks and then blending that as I go. And depending on what kind of an image, you may need more or less blending, that sort of thing. But this also limits your coloring to just that center portion, so you don't have to color the whole image, you don't have to make a big scene. You can just stamp something where you get a teeny tiny portion of the image and get your coloring done a lot faster. So for those who are in a hurry, this is also an elegant technique that covers the fact that you're really, really busy. And don't we all love that? There's also other ways that you can achieve the similar kind of thing without having to worry about the blending going out to the edges, which is to stamp the image twice. And the second time, just punch a circle out and do spotlight coloring. Color that circle shape and not the whole image, and then put it on some dimensional adhesive and just place it over top. So if I were to color just their faces punched out of a circle shape, and glue it right over top, then I could leave the rest of the image blank and let that center part be colored. But I kind of like the idea of just letting it slowly blend out. It's also a great exercise for me in trying to get my colors to blend out to white at the outside edge, just using the lighter and lighter colors till it gets out to that very, very outside. And with both of these, I love that they could be clean and simple cards otherwise, because the coloring just really draws you in and pulls you into the image. And here I used a larger die, since of course the image is larger, uh, versus the other one where I used a smaller die for that central panel. But both of them are really clean and simple still otherwise, which I think is really pretty, because a lot of my stuff is over the top, so it's nice to see them simple. So here's a reminder of that other one that had more of a white border on it. So you can choose what kind of look you want and choose your image size based on that. Thank you so much for joining me for this video. If you liked it, click that like button. As always, you can find the pinnable images over on the blog, etc. And I will see you guys again next time. Go make something beautiful and send it to somebody else. Have a great day.